Today's gospel message, it's still, we're celebrating Easter in the ordinary time. The church chooses green to show we're always growing more and more into the fullness of God. We start off in the journey, uh, usually wrapped up in our tiny little ego self, it's all about me, and now we're coming to see more and more. God's presence, not merely with me, but here and here and here, in fact, embracing all creation. Each of the three readings, the first, it's remembered from the Old Testament. There it speaks about Moses. And uh, they've come out of slavery in Egypt. They're heading on their journey to the Promised Land. And that was usually imaged as Jerusalem come down from heaven now on earth. So God was not only up there, but God was here. In fact, the two of them were one. In fact, it was God who was bringing them all together. And Moses is instructed by Yahweh to say to the people, where will you find God's presence? Don't say, go across the ocean. No. Don't say, go way up to the highest of the heavens. No. God is already in your heart. Now simply... Let that divine love come forth. And the second reading, the Apostle Paul puts it this way. Remember, he was the one always going out. Uh, reminds me very much of Pope Francis. Go out to the periphery. Go out to the margins. Go out to the wounded. Go out to the suffering. Go out, go out, go out. Don't hunker down. Well, Paul puts it this way. Everything is held in existence through this promised one, Christ Jesus. He was God now clothed in human form, but through his very presence, his ministry, his passion, his crucifixion, his resurrection now, has given the key to God's embracing, not just Catholic, but all creation, all creation, all creation. And lastly, in the gospel, here's a scholar. It would be someone like a priest or a professor. Uh, he comes up to Jesus and he says, uh, you know, what do I have to do to be always in God's presence, life everlasting, where God is not just with me now, but forever, forever, forever. So Jesus tells him what is written in the law. We know it by heart. You shall love the Lord your God, hold absolutely nothing back, and your neighbor as yourself. Jesus reply, bingo. Absolutely. Absolutely. But then the scholar, he is still coming from the ego. It's all about me. He wants to justify himself. So he says to Jesus, well, then who is my neighbor? And Jesus, a master storyteller, would always respond with a story but a story that went right to the heart. And he tells the story of a man, businessman, on the way down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Robbers met him on the road, beat him up, left him half dead, stole everything he had. Now, a priest is coming by, and the priest passes the opposite side. Uh, don't be too quick to judge. The priest is in his world, he may be going to temple, with very important. But he doesn't step in to this dying man's world, passes by. And then a Levite, that would be like a deacon or a volunteer church worker in our church, passes by. But then a Samaritan, now we don't uh, even comprehend much what a Samaritan was. They really were the enemies of the chosen people. They were people who didn't believe the right way. And therefore the chosen people would say, out, out. And this kind of, what to the chosen people is like an outlaw. He comes up, he's moved with compassion. What does that mean? Solidarity with this dying person in the ditch. Pours oil and wine on his wounds bandages him, puts him on his animal, takes him to a nearby inn. Remember, they didn't have hospitals then. 
in was the best second choice. Took out two silver coins, gave to the innkeeper, to the instruction, take care of him. If you spend more, I'll repay everything on my way back. Then now Jesus raises the question, which of these, in your opinion, was neighbor to this victim in the ditch? The man answered, well, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus responds, go and do likewise. In other words, go back to Moses, that God is already with you. We see now God as the victim in the ditch. We see now God as this Samaritan outlaw. Both of them bring that shining presence to the fore. Again and again, Pope Francis emphasizes the easiest people to see God's presence are like the undocumented asylum seekers at the border or somebody who has just been shot for no reason at all, uh, somebody who has lost everything for whatever reason, and now uh, how are they going to face the future? God comes to us in ways often beyond our comprehension. Thomas Aquinas, the great master theologian in the Catholic Church, because all of us want to like put God in the box. We got it all wrapped up. We know exactly. He says, if somebody comes to you that way, you know one thing for sure. That's not God. That's not God. I come to you this evening as a Glen Mary Hall missioner. Who are we? We've been called the Marines of the Catholic Church because we go out to the margins. We go to places where others would not go. Places within the diocese where there is no gathering for Catholics like this around the table of the Lord. There is none. We come in with the invitation of the bishop and we start around the kitchen table. It might be a dozen people. I'll tell you one final story. Uh, this is down in Tennessee, Diocese of Knoxville. Uh, we first approached them and said, do you really want a Catholic church? Uh, there were very few Catholics in the county. In a local high school, there wasn't a single child that was Catholic. And so we had a town square meeting, and we raised the question, do you want a Catholic church? And overwhelmingly, the response was, absolutely. Then they asked us, but where are you going to worship? Where are you going to gather? We didn't have a clue. One person stepped up. Uh, there's an empty building on the main drag. We can rent it to you for like a buck a year. They were more missionary than we. A missionary is always welcoming. And they not only welcome with an open heart, but an open pocketbook to make sure we had a place to gather. Well, I sat down with those few that were gathered there were 12 of them. They called themselves the 12 apostles. Now, maybe they weren't at that pay grade, but they were working on it. And uh, in terms of, I came back two and a half years later. Uh, the story was written up in the Glenmary Challenge. And at the dedication, what did I behold? There were 130 people gathered for that dedication. What happened? Well, those 12, and there were more kept being added on, uh, they first went out in the county. There were a lot of people who had moved from the north, Boston, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and so forth, because it's very cheap retirement living. Well, there was no Catholic church, so they drifted. These folks went out and invited them back. 90% came back. There were also a huge number of undocumented. Uh, there was really grunt work uh, in the county that was required that locals really weren't willing to do, and so they brought in lots of undocumented, overwhelmingly Catholic, overwhelmingly. Well, when they talked to them, what they learned was, because they didn't have papers, they were afraid if they showed up at mass, somebody would spot them, they'd get deported, no papers. They assured them, no, the church is a sanctuary, is a sacred place, a safe place for you. You're a child of God, that's all that matters. So they came. They trickled in and they found out they weren't shipped out and it was like 30 youngsters uh, in the youth group within less than two years. Amazing. 
because they came at it as Moses says, God's already there in your heart. Open your heart. Allow that divine love to flow through you to reach out always to the margins, to the wounded, to the excluded. I close then with my purpose here uh, is to invite me, I invite you, uh, to be a big boost to the work. In those first days, we almost have no money at all and very, very limited resources. That's where we turn to you. And the bishop and the pastor have given their full blessing. Uh, all of the second collection will all go to that effort down in Tennessee. Just beginning, just beginning. In terms of two, what I also ask for, uh, is there any one of you who would want to go out to the margins? to those very places that most wounded, most abandoned. And not only a young person, maybe thinking of priesthood or a sisterhood or a brother, volunteer, whoever. You would be welcomed with open arms. If that's where God is leading you, Glenmary is a good place to start. May we stand for the prayer. <clears throat> I believe in one God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God.